All right, I think we should go ahead and get started because I don't want you all to miss another minute of what Wanda has prepared. It is phenomenal. I can honestly say um, leading up to this event and being on calls with Wanda and talking about you know, what you're going to experience today, I left every single phone call, every meeting with a golden nugget um, that I could apply to my life. And um, every session just felt so edifying. And so I know you all are in store for something absolutely amazing. So Thank with you. that, let's get started. Um, good afternoon, Terps. My name is Natalie Ross, and I'm the Senior Director of Alumni Events and Programs at your Alumni Association. Thank you for joining us for Passion and Purpose with Wanda Alexander. This event is part of Terrapin Love Week, where we explore love for self, love of career, and romantic love. I hope you will join us for more events this week, including how to keep the spark alive during a pandemic tonight at 7 p.m. Would you do business with yourself webinar tomorrow at noon? And the not so newlywed game on Friday at 7 p.m., featuring alumni couples battling it out to see who knows their spouse best. Don't forget, if you attend two or more events this week, you will be automatically entered into a chance to win a sweet treat box delivered right to your door. Before I introduce our dynamic speaker, I have a few housekeeping items. This session will be recorded and included on our YouTube channel. Please remember to keep your audio muted during the webinar. Wanda has asked that you have a journal or piece of paper and a writing utensil available during the session. Please take a moment to locate the chat box. I know some of you have already shared with us in it um, that's below the screen. And you can go ahead and respond to some of the questions and really interact with Wanda during the session in the chat box. Make sure to select all panelists and attendees so that we can see your comments. There will be time at the end for Q&A. If you have any questions, please use the raise hand function below the screen and we'll call on you at that time. You may be able to unmute and ask your question to Wanda. If you prefer not to ask your question audibly, please place your question in the Q&A box and we'll make sure to check it frequently so that we can ask your question. I am so excited to introduce you to our speaker. Wanda Alexis Alexander is a successful entrepreneur and native Washingtonian. She graduated from the University of Maryland in 1981 and has remained connected through the University of Maryland Alumni Association, yes. Association serving as president of the Alumni Association Board of Governors from 2015 to 2017. She also serves as a trustee with the University of Maryland College Park Foundation Board. Wanda encourages, motivates, and inspires entrepreneurs, business leaders, and purpose-driven visionaries to build the lives they really want from the inside out. She launched her podcast, What If with Wanda in 2020, available on Spotify, and has continued provoking thought and challenging her listeners to dig deep, reflect, and excel. Wanda is the recent recipient of the Tizer Gottwals Award given to a distinguished alum who has given their time and talent to the university. And she has also received the Distinguished Alumnus Award. Today, Wanda has not only prepared for you a workshop on passion and purpose, she has also been generous in offering a 30-minute complimentary coaching session to three randomly selected attendees viewing today. At the closing of the event, we will share with you how you can be entered into winning a complimentary coaching session. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Wanda. Hello, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I listened to that and said, hmm, I want to meet her. <laughs> thank everyone. I thank you so much for attending. It means everything to me that someone decided, oh, we want to listen to what that lady says. Because when I was growing up, I was always told to be quiet because I talked all the time. I questioned everything. And the reason I'm sharing that in this moment is because even as children, we show who we are. And sometimes we, look, we lose sight of that person as life happens and as we grow up. And one of the things that I did to touch, to be back in touch with my own passion, which also fueled my purpose, was to figure out what those things were that really mattered to me and what I enjoyed doing. 
So I'm going to share just a few stories with you, and then I'm really going to dive into what passion is, in my opinion, and how you can tap into your purpose, because I'm going to give you a little nugget right now. You are already operating in your purpose. So I want you to take a deep breath and inhale that, because some people are looking around and saying, well, this doesn't look like the job I want. And this doesn't look like this, I want and that, but I'm here to tell you that every single thing that has happened in your life from the moment you came to this planet has happened to inform you and to move you more and more into the purpose for which you are here. A lot of people walk around and don't believe they have any purpose. But everybody on the planet has a purpose. It's just we want to keep defining what it is instead of really figuring out who we are and how that informs our passion. We want to look at other people and decide, I want what they have, or why can't I do it that way? And I'm here to tell you a secret today. Please make sure you're listening to this. It is not better to be someone other than you. It is not better to do anything differently than what you are doing now. Change will come, but right now, today, do you appreciate yourself? Do you appreciate the truth of the fact that whatever is happening to you right now is informing your life's purpose? Let me give you an example. I didn't know what examples I would use, but one just came to me, so I'm going to give it to you. When I was three years old, all I remember is I had a passion for the balloon man. Now, many of you may not know what that is, but in my Northeast neighborhood in Washington, DC, there was a gentleman who would show up with an abundance of balloons. And while everyone else was crazy about the ice cream man, bringing all the good ice cream and yelling at their parents to send money so they can buy it, I wanted a balloon. I used to watch as those balloons would crest over the hill on my street and see him coming up behind the balloons. And I just wanted the balloons. I just thought they were beautiful. I just thought, why can't I have one of those? And one day when I was three years old, I was outside with my two sisters who were six and five with our neighborhood friends doing whatever you do when you're three, because this story has been told to me. I don't remember it. I just remember the balloon man. And you know, when you go out, your parents give you instructions, correct? At least when I was growing up, stay with your sisters, don't wander from this block, X, Y, and Z. Well, the next thing they knew, they looked up and I was gone. Now, of course, everyone is panicking. So they send all the teenagers in the neighborhood, looking in the laundry rooms, looking in, we live in this development, just looking anywhere a little three-year-old could have wandered. And my mother was not doing well. About 45 minutes to an hour later, after my father had been contacted, he had gone into the DC fire department the day after I was born. So he had his firefighting friends, he had his police officer friends, Everyone was involved in this search for this little girl. And what I've been told is that 45 minutes to an hour, the police pull up into the front of our development. And in the back seat of that car was three-year-old Wanda, moi, with a balloon. And depending on who tells the story, I also had a lollipop or a pickle. Knowing me, I had both if they were offering it out. And I've always been told that story. Everyone in my family who knows that story, especially the senior members of my family, would always talk to me about that and say, who is this little three-year-old girl who would just follow a stranger knowing that she wasn't supposed to leave where she was? And I want you all to know, when I remembered that story as an adult, when I was in the middle of some very difficult decisions and situations, I wanted to remember her fearlessness. 
I wanted to know what was in that little girl that she saw what she wanted and she went after it. People, I want you to know, listeners, that's what passion looks like. I risk getting a spanking. I risk not being on the right side of my parents. I, I risk being disciplined for being disobedient for a balloon. See, passion, and I wrote this down for you because I wanted to say it the way it came to me. Passion is that thing that you desire that you are willing to sacrifice and or suffer to obtain and maintain. Passion is that thing you're willing to sacrifice even other things that you think are important to you, to pursue it. And sometimes we don't even know what that is. We know we like a lot of things. I have passion for a Lay's potato chip. I mean, it's my weakness, but trust and believe I'm not sacrificing anything for some potato chips. But what I have always loved in my life is been talking. See what I'm doing now? <laughs> been teaching. When I was in junior high school, ninth grade, back then junior high went to ninth grade. Senior high started at 10. I was the substitute teacher for some of my classes. Now, I thought it was because I was just smart and the teacher could trust me, but I had that teaching gifting. I just didn't recognize it. I just thought I'm being Wanda, right? So years later, I'm getting ready to graduate from high school and I promise you, I'm not gonna give you my whole life story. I'm just gonna share some things that helped direct me to what my passion was. My decision as a senior in high school was I wanted to get the best dress award. I don't know if anybody can relate to that, but back then when you were graduating, they, all, you know, they had all of these different contests, most attractive, most likely to succeed, didn't get that one. You know, I only focused on one. I want to be the best dressed senior coming out of this school. So I was an athlete. I played volleyball. I played basketball. I want you all to understand, I didn't have passion for those sports. I played them because I was halfway good and I was tall, right? But the minute my mother said, you can't work at the department store and go to school and play sports, you're going to have to sacrifice something. I sacrificed those two sports. And I got me a job at head company, which doesn't exist anymore. Macy's bought them up, but it was, that's where I worked. And every week that I got paid, I had an outfit already lined up. I was sharp every day. You could not tell me I was not the best dressed thing walking on the planet in Suitland, uh, Maryland, which is where I was growing up by that time. And I was excited. People would compliment me on my outfits, everything. And then the nominations came out. I'm trying not to have any feelings about this because I've, I've already let it go. It's in the past. But I didn't even get nominated for the Best Dress Award. I'm looking around the school saying, have y'all not seen me? Have you all not recognized I didn't get nominated? The basketball team went to the state championship. <clears throat> the volleyball team went to the state championship. I don't remember which one of them won, but the fact that both of them went and one of them won, I got ridiculed about that a lot, teased about that a lot from my coaches and everyone. I sacrificed that because my passion was being seen as this fly girl, you know, best strength didn't get nominated, but I got nominated for two other awards. One was most attractive female student, whatever. If y'all thought I was that fine, y'all didn't notice what I was wearing. And the other one was lady of the year, which I was so upset about being nominated, not being nominated for best dress. I poo-pooed away lady of the year. What is that? So when the school met, we had the seniors in the floor 
in the auditorium, in the gym, and the juniors were on this side and the sophomores were on the other side and they were naming all these people and they were getting their awards. And I was sitting there, I have to be honest, with serious attitude. If they could just look at what I have on today, they would see that they made a mistake. Not nominating me, didn't win the most attractive female student, same woman who won best dress, Carol Sewell, Sewell still remember it. <laughs> She won most attractive. And then they called for lady of the year. And the people sitting around me were like, Wanda, Wanda, they just called your name. I was like, what? They just called your name. And the place erupted. It was clapping and standing up and yelling and everything. And I'm looking around going, what in the world is this? By the time I made it to the front of that auditorium, to receive that gift, I was in tears, in tears. Because in that moment in my life is when I learned what's inside of you is really what matters. We can do a lot of things to dress up the exterior. We can own a lot of things. Gifts are not fame. Our gifts, our talents, they're not fame and money or likes and retweets. You are the gift. Your gifts are the talents and the things that were placed in you. And that's what people remember. And that's what impacts others. And when your life is impacting others, then you are walking in purpose. And I started to change my mind about what was important. Now, of course, life continued to happen, and I continued to forget who I was in some cases, but I would always come back to her. I would always come back and say, it's not on the outside, it's the inside. What's in there? So what I want to talk to you guys about today is what's in there. What's in there? Because I guarantee you, everything that's in you already is purposeful. Do I need to say that again? You know, this is, I'm talking to the telephone right now. It's like talking to yourself in the mirror. <laughs> and so I'm used to getting response, but I want you all to understand this so I can get it right. The reason I talk about people living their life from the inside out, because it's absolutely nothing you do in this life that you don't bring to it. How you function, how you treat others, it's all in you. You can't treat others any better than you treat yourself. You can do it for a while, but eventually you show up. And who is that that's showing up? How much time do we take to get to know who we are so we can discover what our passions are? And I'm telling you, when we tap into that, purpose is already in process. Everyone wants an answer. What is my purpose? What you are living in your purpose right now. What's important right now? Today, last year, in my opinion, was an opportune time for people to get to know themselves in a different, in a higher, in a deeper way. I want you to hear what I just said. We get so busy in our lives. I was guilty of this. Do not misunderstand me. That we don't even know who we are. We show up and other people tell us, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the truth of us. How do I show up is what I used to ask myself. Who is this that's showing up? Do not think that there weren't times in my life where people sat across the desk from me and I had a Northeast flashback. For those of you who don't know what that is, I grew up in Northeast DC. And you know, growing up could be a little rough and you had to do what you had to do to survive. A Northeast flashback would be me spouting the dozens. Spouting the dozens, for those who don't know what that is, we also called it joning on other people, was using your mouth you know, to joan on people, to put people down. Funny, being funny, but in, in fact, you're trying to win. You're trying to put them down. You want them to feel bad. 
that's when I say I want to have a Northeast flashback, that's what I, I'm referring to. I don't want to be that person. I've learned how to tame her. I sit her in the back of the bus with the little girl who also went after the balloon. Sometimes she, her fearlessness shows up in a way that doesn't need to show up, but I'm digressing. At the end of the day, I want to talk to you about your purpose and everything for you to meet that purpose head on every day is already in you. I'll say it again. Everything is already in there. You, your mission is to seek it out and then live it out. Your mission I'm, I'm going back to Mission Impossible Days, if you decide to accept it, is to seek it out and then live it out. And I don't mean starting tomorrow or starting when the pandemic is over or starting when you finish this class or starting when you get another job. I mean, starting right now. And since this is Love Week, I want you all to know that the process of doing this is fueled by love. Love of self, wanting to be the best self you can be. I always say to people, <laughs> I don't want to be the person that when I show up, people go, oh, here's Wanda. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> I want family and friends and others to get excited because I'm going to show up because my goal is to bring all of the good stuff with me. Doesn't mean I'm 100% at this, but it's my intention. It's my objective. It's my focus. So it's how I try to show up all the time. And I try to bring all the cousins of love with me. Patience, mm, give me a minute. Patience, joy, peace, forgiveness, kindness, gentleness, and this one is important, self-control. That's right, self-control. We don't have to do anything in life but like anybody else. You know why? Because each and every one of us is a unique human being. I don't have the same fingerprint as another person. My, I have four siblings, four, but none of them were the third daughter to Sam and Grace Alexander. I'm the only one who has that title. So when you look at your birth order, even in your family, you are the only person with that birth order. So to assume that you will be even like your siblings completely is a misnomer. You came here with gifts and talents for your space in this place during this time. So, People always say to me, well, how do I tap into my passion? How do I get to know myself? Well, what I wanna do right now is to come up, I came up with seven questions. Now in my book, I have many more than that, but this is just a short exercise. So I'm hoping if you have a pen and some paper, you're ready to write these down. And I think that I'm gonna get some assistance maybe in getting uh, these questions on the board. But one of the main questions that's not of the seven, I want you to ask yourself, and you don't have to answer it right now, but what is most important to me? Now that doesn't have to be one answer. I asked myself these questions the other day and filled it out. And I had six or seven things under what is most important to me. But a lot of times we don't stop to even ask that question. So I want you to write that one down. And then I'm going to put seven others on the screen. And she mentioned I'm doing a giveaway. Well, one of the things we want you to do as you go through this process, if you want to share some of these question answers with me via Twitter or Facebook, and we'll talk about that le later, we'll put all of those in a drawing. So question number one, since I talked about the little girl and the balloon, Answer this for me. As a child, I love to, and fill in the blank. As a child, I loved to, 
fill in the blank. People think, oh, everybody keeps going back to my childhood. Listen, you came here with everything you need to complete your purpose. So that means when you were a child, it was showing up there. So why not take a time to take a look at that? There we go. I like that, Holly. You like being with your friends. So you like sharing your time and your space with others. Reading, oh my gosh, Lori, you were talking to me. As a little girl, I read all the time. Dominique, going outside. I can feel that after 2022. Yes, being outside in nature. Dance, oh, Erica. Crafts, there we go. So even as a child, these are the things you love. Singing on the subway, what? These are things you love, don't miss it. All right, fashion, Jackie, that's good. Amanda, crafting. All right, I'm coming up with question number two. Are you ready? Who's was that lined up this stuff animals? What'd you do? Did you train them or coach them or teach them? That is funny. Question number two is coming. Over the last few weeks, now I'm bringing you back to the present again. I thought a lot about blank. Over the last few weeks, I thought a lot about this session. I thought a lot about the time when I'll be able to get in front of people and love on them in person. I thought about it a lot. So I wanna thank all of you for giving me this opportunity to be here and talk to you today. But over the last few weeks, family members, I thought a lot, I can't read them all guys, I'm sorry. My job and my student, how to help Erica, yes. Arnold, yes. Yes, better serve, Brienne, yes. Yeah, see, this is passion, guys. This is passion and it's purposeful. Getting back to normal. I wanted to, I wish I could, I could do a whole session on getting back to normal. The, the one thing we need to understand, there are two constants, time and change. There's absolutely nothing we can do about any of them. And a lot of times we don't get to determine what's going to happen with our time or what that change is going to be. We get to decide who we're gonna be in the midst of it because changing is happening. Adapting is important, but when you know yourself, no matter what change comes, you can stand on the rock of who you really are. I'm telling you, I have been through some things, but knowing who I am, doing the work, doing the work, doing the work and continuing to support her in that place has helped me People laugh at me when I say I was so happy last year. Y'all, I don't even know how to explain it to you right now, but I got time. I got more time to dig deeper, to talk about who are you today, Wanda? Are those answers the same answers? Are there things that you're looking at differently? Is there something you want to pursue, pursue differently? This quiet time that we've had, and it's been quiet if we allowed it to be. I turned off the TV. I didn't watch a lot of news. I didn't get on a so lot of social media when I was spending time with me. I love me that much that I gave me some attention. And I think the people in your life, you have to love them enough to turn stuff off and give them your attention. You know, if you take your two ears and you put them together, they form a heart. And in between heart is E-A-R. It's called an ear. An ear, I always say, be an ear. Listen to your loved ones. Be present. Don't be distracted by all the things that can distract us. Okay, question three, because I can go on all day. Question number three, right now, today. Oh, I'm bringing you all the way in now. Right now, today, I'd like to release and let go of what? No definitions. People, place, thing, thought, whatever. Right now, today, I'd like to release and let go of. That one's tough. Ain't Tara, yes, yes, yes. Anger comes to inform, Lord. Let me tell you that. Anger comes to inform. So when we get angry, loneliness, yes, we can talk about that too. And get up, Carrie, come on now. Insecurity, anxiety, yes. These are all daily clutter and busyness, yes. Stress, that's what I'm talking about. See, the minute 
feeling bad about not, and I can't read the Brienne, self-criticism, let me tell you, that's a trick of the enemy. That's why when you know yourself, when the criticism comes, you can respond with the truth. Did you hear what I said? When the criticism comes, when the doubts come, you can respond with the truth. Do you know people laugh at me when I say this, but I learned this years ago from a school teacher that I really admired and worked with. And people would say, oh, Wanda, you look really nice. And I'm like, you're only saying it because it's true. And that would, people wouldn't know how to handle that because people look at that and think it's ego. Let me tell you something. It's important that you are your best cheerleader. And when you know how to be a cheerleader for yourself, you can be a cheerleader for others. When you learn how to love yourself well and deep, so when those thoughts of doubt, we live in the world, doubtful thoughts will come. Things, clutter actually shows you, Henry, clutter is explaining to you that there's something inside. That doesn't mean it's bad or anything. I'm just saying you build your life from the inside out. So when there is clutter, you have to look at that clutter and say, what are you representing? And it's very easy for us to say, oh, busy schedule. I don't have time. Let's go deeper than that. Okay. Question number four. This is really good, guys. As an adult, ooh, my soul feels complete when. Ooh, I had some answers for that one. And one of them including eating, included eating. <laughs> I'm fully present. There you go, Sarah. That's it. That's it. Your soul is complete. When you are completely present authentically. You know, sometimes we go places and say, oh, I got to put my such and such hat on, or I have to put my such and such hat on. And one of the things I tried to create in my business was I wanted everyone to show up as they were. <laughs> I want you to show up. I want you to say, I don't understand this, so we can work with you. I want you to say, I'm not happy with this, and we can help you with that. But bring yourself into the room. You're the person we hired. We didn't hire some caricature of you. You may think you may have gotten over in the interview, but we saw something else. When we did our reviews, we allowed every team member to do their own review first. And then we sat down and had a conversation. Absolutely, Tara. And Tara, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Absolutely, I get to spend time with whoever that is, Dominique. Absolutely, absolutely. As an adult, so I've, take, I've taken you back to your childhood. Now, today, as an adult, my soul feels complete when, so guess what? How can we do more of that? Question number five. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. I have the power to. Yes, yes, design my life. Yes, I have Amanda, yes, to improve. Control, my Lori, did I say self-control or not? Yes, Carrie, yes, control, feel happy, yes. Okay, did, did I cherry pick these people? I mean, how did you all get to be here today? Because you all are just, you all can see how excited I am, right? This is my passion. If you can't see it and feel it through this screen. Cho oh, I like the chose with my career. I could talk about that for days. To change what I'm not. Michelle, I can't see the whole thing, but okay. Make it happen. You're making it happen right now. Right now, this moment. You chose to sign into this group and to have these thought-provoking questions and to share this moment with a whole bunch of other people. You have the power. I have the power to say yes or no. Yes and no. This is a, important for a lot of people. Yes and no are equally valuable, equally important if they come from a place of truth. Do not say yes because you feel it's something that people need you to do and you are required to do it. My friend Harris and Corey, we were having a conversation one day and I was and this was several years ago, and I was vacillating about something that I had to do. 
but I really didn't want to do it. I even felt the person was manipulating me, right? So this is the strong Wanda, follow the balloon man and a whole bunch of other things I haven't even shared with you. But even in that strength, there are moments, there are moments when my strength does not kick in. So what I learned was two questions. When you're being asked to do something, ask two questions. Do I want to do it? Do I have to do it? And be honest with yourself. And if you come up with two no's, guess what that answer is? <laughs> I had gotten so good at, the, at no that I can say it as a complete sentence. Because the minute you say no and then start giving excuses behind it, Anyone who's trying to get you to do something you don't want to do, think those excuses is a negotiation for them. I don't give you that. I give you no. And my yes is equally as powerful. Question six. <laughs> Today, I choose to. Today. Thank you, Nefertiti. Be myself. Nobody can do you but you. I, listen to me. I have had people come up to me and say, can you show me how to do this? You use all of these analogies. How do you do that? Can you teach me? And I say, listen, you have to use your gifts and talents the way they were placed in you. Trying to do it like someone else is cheating yourself. It's almost like violence against yourself if you really, really think about it deeply. Yes, Jenny, give yourself a break. Dominique, always be present for you. There are moments when you're in the midst of something and you may feel like you're being dragged. You have every right to stop in the middle of that and say, I need five minutes. And take it. That's what your power is. Your power to choose. Time ain't waiting for you, right? Change is not coming to you and saying, can we get your permission? <laughs> it's gonna happen. You have to choose how you could. You know what, Holly? I, uh, people say, think outside the box. And I say, think inside myself and bring it out to everyone else. I don't, but I know what you, what you mean when you say that. You have to know you don't have to do everything the way everybody else does. That is so true. And number seven, because I told you I'd give you a question and answer period. I am light. That's one of my mantras. I am light. What am I attracting into my life right now? Woo. Now that one, you may have to take some time with that one. Because sometimes we don't want to deal with it. But sometimes when things are happening, they don't feel good to me. You know what I do? Like, how did I attract this? How did I attract peace, joy, happiness? That's exactly right. I want to attract the good stuff. And you know what? When I sit positivity, exactly. I also say when I show up, I want to bring all of that with me. There is a saying, I think uh, many of you may know of it. It's uh, from the whole uh, series on the secret, but it's really spiritual truth. What you focus on is what you're attracting. What you focus on will expand. And when I say people go do your inward work, so you can bring more of your authentic self out. So you can do those things that fuel you and feed you and allow you to be new beginnings, probably conflict. You know, people use the word conflict and make it negative all the time. And I say sometimes conflict comes to teach us. Confrontation doesn't have to be negative. It just needs to be honest and truthful. I want to give you two quotes and then I'm going to open up this floor, really because I, I, I want you all to ask whatever you want to ask. <clears throat> and I love this one quote, and some of you may know who said it, and if you do, let me know. But the quote is this, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. 
Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinion drown out your own inner voice. And the most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. And a scripture, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding any fault and it will be given to you. Ask, seek, knock, and all of those will be answered positively if they've been requested in truth. So I'm going to open up the door for questions <laughs> because I can talk about this stuff for hours because I just love the fact that everybody on this planet matters and many people walk around here not realizing how they matter to the rest of us and you matter right now. Okay, I'm stopping. <laughs> Wanda, that was good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed it. I love that everyone got involved and, and answered those questions because that's the conversation you start with yourself. Um, and you be true to yourself. My, my aunt wrote that in my yearbook. Thank you, Carrie. My aunt wrote that in my yearbook when I left high school. Wanda, to thine own self be true. And to this day, I can see it. I can see it. I didn't know how important it was, but it impacted me when I saw it and I've never let it go. Thank you so much, Wanda. Thank you, thank you. Do we have any questions? You can go ahead um, and submit it um, either in the Q&A. Um, I'll check the Q&A box right now. If you'd like to raise your hand, I'll be looking for you. Um, okay, I think I see someone here. Tara, is that Tara? Brianne, is that you? Okay. Would you like to ask a question, Brianne? I think you can unmute yourself now. I'm, I wish I could see your questions, guys. I can't, but I think I can pick them up later. Brianne, are you there? I am, but I didn't have a question. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I thought I saw your hand raised. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> There's some questions in the chat. I just can't read the full question. Oh, sure. Okay, here we go. Let me see. Um, does Wanda have an Instagram or website? <laughs> yes, and yes. <laughs> and, and, and this is the sad part. I don't know it by heart so that uh, there's a card that's going to show up on the screen, right? And it'll have all my information on it. And I also think it's going to be sent to everyone who signed up. That's so correct. We'll be sharing that information. <laughs> Any other questions? There were a few that popped up. I just couldn't ah, read. I see a raised hand. Hold on. Let's see here. Um, who is raising their hand? Ah, Janie. Okay. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, I just wanted to say, I see two questions in the chat that I didn't hear them uh, read. One says, if you recognize you have lost touch with that child you used to be, where do you start to find her? Sometimes I feel like, you know, not necessarily wanting to know about the lost child, but the happy person for me personally, that wasn't my yes. with someone else's. And then there's another one. Sometimes I don't present my true self because I think if I can do it, anyone can. I just like being in that trap. So that's what others have asked. Okay. Thank okay. you. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Let me go back to the, uh, can I get back to that child? That child was happy. You know, <clears throat> this is why I think silence is so important, spending time with yourself. And what happens when we do that is everything bombards our mind. What we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. Do we, people, we start to feel guilty about taking time for ourselves. And I really wish people would let go of that because that is your first, your most sacred relationship beyond the one with your creator, you're with yourself 24 hours a day and you want to be 
happy. Happy is a choice. And so as a child, when you were happy, that's why I asked, as a child, I love to, I want you to sit and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to deep breathe. And the only thing I want you to conjure up are those happy memories as a child. Someone said to me once, I don't have any happy child memories. And I said, I beg to differ. I don't know you, but I guarantee you, you have some happy child memories. And sure enough, they were able to bring them up and bring them up. Bring, and if you can't bring up your childhood memories, bring up memories where you were happy, where you laughed till you cried, where you hugged someone and felt complete. Those moments when you laughed with friends, anything that brought you joy, bring it up, feel it, and hold on to it. It is your thought process, your thought life that impacts your joy. So I want you to start paying attention to what you are thinking. And you need to be able to combat any negative thought with the truth of who you are. Because everybody on this call, fearfully and wonderfully made, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. You were created this way for this time, for this season. You got to love on that person. And the more you love on you, trust me, you are going to attract so much love in your life. I can't even explain it. I hope I answered that question. And the second question, I'm sorry. Um, can you repeat it? Yeah. The second question was, um, so we talked about the, um, sometimes I don't present my true self because I think if I can do it, anyone can. I dislike, so I think you answered that one. And then um, if you recognize you have lost touch with that child you used to be, where do you start to find her again? Or right. him? The, that's the one I just answered. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's coming up with those happy childhood memories. But to, to tap into your happy and your joy, bring up those memories where you experience that. And then, this is the other thing, what you focus on will expand. I don't want you to think about, I'm unhappy and this is why. I want you to think about, when I am happy, this is how I feel. This is what would make me happy. When you start to focus in that direction, you're gonna bring more happy opportunities to you. I know that sounds, people don't believe it, but it's so true. I have laughed more in the last year than you can realize. I have loved on more people and I couldn't hug them because the joy, the love, the peace, all of that came into this world with you. The world has tried to strip you of it, but you have the power to hold on to it. One of the comments was from Jacqueline, who has now raised her hand, so I'll bring her in. Her comment was about not presenting your true self. So Jacqueline, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. And if you can just expand on that question, I greatly appreciate it. Hi there. How's everyone? Hey. Thank you, Wanda. This was- You're welcome. Um, what, I, what I wanted to uh, get more clarity on or clarify the question is, um, I've had a successful career and a successful life and I'm continuing to do that. It's not been without stumbles and falls and all of that, but there are times as I've accumulated that wisdom and knowledge and work experience where I won't let myself go towards something really great. A little bit mm. out of fear, but mostly because I think, well, everybody can do this. If I can do it, it's so easy. Why can't they? What's, what's so different? That, that they would want me instead of someone else. That's oh my gosh. I'm so happy to answer this question for you. Thank you. My first podcast is called, Why Are You Hiding? Anything you have a passion to do, you don't focus on other people. You focus on you and getting it done. Imagine how many things we would not experience in the world if someone said, oh, somebody else can do that. Or other people who say, oh, I had that idea, or I had that idea. Yeah, well, they did it. At the end of the day, you may believe anybody else can do it. Because we do. When, when something is so natural in us, we think it's simple, right? No. You have a passion for it. You want to move toward it. This is why I'm on this phone talking to you guys right now. Because I could have stayed running a multi-million dollar business and having speaking engagements with my staff. 
and write newsletters, but I wanted more. And so in 2000, and I saw every everybody and their mama out there speaking. Am I right? Everybody got a podcast. Every It doesn't matter. What God placed in me is mine. And what he placed in me is for others. What he placed in you is for others. It's 7.5 billion people on this planet. There's a few, there's a few you're supposed to touch. Wow, that was the most incredible answer ever. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I, I get it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Okay, we oh, have like a question. <laughs> I have a question that was just dropped in the Q&A box um, from, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly, Lorey um, or Lori. It took me several decades to get to the point where I finally followed my passion. How can I get my son to bypass the years of doing what others expect of him and get right to following his passion? Let me answer that right now. Let me say, I'm going to sit up and answer that. <laughs> All of us, every last one of us, have a journey, a life journey. One of the most important things you can do for your son is continue to love him and continue to tell him there is greatness in him. And then the third thing, you are to keep doing what you're doing in front of him. And you share some of the struggles with that and you share with him how there were times when you compromised who you were, and this is the result. We have to be free to share some truths with our children. Now, I have to uh, throw in this caveat. I have not raised any children, but there are dozens, uh, including my own blood, that call me Aunt Wanda, and I have helped raise a lot of them. And the one thing that I do for them is tell them the truth. Because sometimes parents have a hard time talking about certain things, but parents give me permission, I tell the truth. So I want you to know, you cannot, um, you cannot change what the better plan is for your son's life. You just have to believe it's there. You have to speak it into him and you have to walk it out in front of him because everybody's pace is different. I had to go through my teenage angst. I had to go through... A, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I had this disease called CPPD, which stands for Controlling People Pleasing Diva. I had to get over all of that. So we all, the experiences that come in life are coming to teach us. And so some of what you see your son going through, he has to go through so he can get the lesson so solid, so deep that it becomes a part of his environmental DNA. I hope I answered your question. Um, Wanda, I have a question. Um, so how does one look at their current circumstance mm -hmm. and begin to change their thought life as opposed to this is depressing or this is unhappy to what steps can I take to alter my thought life and bring out the lessons that I need to learn in that season? Can you speak right. to that? I can speak to that. Um, there's so many different ways we can do that. The renewing, let me, let, me, let me make this caveat. The renewing of your mind. Notice the word renew. When you renew something, that means it's already existed, right? Right? I'm going to renew my subscription. I don't have to renew my subscription to the Alumni Association because I'm a lifetime member. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Ho hopefully all of you will do the same thing. I digress. But when you renew something, it means it's already existed. So all those negative thoughts and everything that come, those came after your mind. But your, your actual mind you came here with does not spend a lot of time in that. It's just the world. You've been involved with the world since you got here. The, I always say the world is one of my enemies, but I'm, I was sent here to love the world and to be light in the world, right? So you have to know you can renew your mind to what it was when you got here. It just takes work. It takes repetition. What do you have around you in your home, in your office, in your car? What do you have? Because I have mantras. And one of my mantras is I am enough. And I will always have enough to do what I was sent here to do. 
Do you know how many years I had to say that before I started really living it? I just want to be truthful, guys. I just want you to know what is the mindset you want to have? All you have to do is ask. I don't want to think negatively anymore. Then you start, those positive thoughts will start coming to you. You will start bringing positive people into your life and you will start hearing yourself. I'm serious. And when you hear it, you change it. So the other day I said to my sister, I am never going to be a good cook. And she said, you sure won't saying that. You follow me? And I immediately said, oh, I am looking forward to the time when I cook a meal from scratch and everybody loves it. I used to say, I never find deals. My friends would come in with the best outfits and say, girl, I got this 70% off. And I would say, I never find deals like that. And one day I heard myself, I'm being honest. And I said, I will never say that again. And I said, I am, uh, I am attracted to deals and deals are attracted to me. Y'all don't even wanna know the kind of deals I have had in my life. Woo! I mean, vacations. I mean, I'm telling you, y'all might think this is hocus pocus. This works because you are powerful. What you think you will manifest. I so like that's that. how you start dealing with that. I do have, um, I think we have time for maybe two more questions, Wanda, before we close out and obviously share with you all how you can enter into win um, a 30 minute uh, complimentary uh, coaching session with Wanda. But last two questions I have here. Um, could you talk about how passion is different than interest? Um, and how does one identify their passion? That's what I've tried to talk about. Interest is, I love basketball. I can watch men and women run up and down the court and score and dunk and do all that. But if I had to do anything physical, you know, to help move that along, not going to happen. That's just an interest. Okay. But when it's a passion, you will sacrifice. And sacrifice means doing it afraid, means I had something else to do today. I just want you all to know this. And when Marilyn reached out to me, I said, yes, this is my passion. So that other gig, I, you know, I'll be doing it again tomorrow. But I took the full day off to prepare for you. Passion is the thing you desire that you are willing to sacrifice and or suffer to attain, obtain, and maintain. There's a song by Bobby Caldwell, What You Won't Do For Love. Listen to it, because it's talking about self-love. When you are willing to go the distance, that's not interest, that's passion. When you, when you, you know, I love to eat. When I turn down an invitation to eat with folks to do something, I'm passionate about that other something. Do you, you follow what I'm saying? I hope that's helping because in order to truly have joy on this journey, this journey called life, pursuing your passion is a key. You can get this, oh, this is good. You can get distracted by your interests, but you will not be distracted by your passion. And the last thing I'm going to say is passion never pursues money, but I'm telling you from experience that money will run down as you're pursuing your passion. It'll run you down. And a whole bunch of other blessings too. All when right, last question. Passion. Last question, if we can squeeze this one in. Um, okay. How do you deal with having a relationship with someone who has no passion, doesn't think it's important? I'm passionate about my career, my child, my family and friends and interests but my husband does not. I feel like I need to join a support group for spouses um, of passionless people. Any advice? Because it is poison and just don't hang out with the friend or obviously it's not, that's not going to work. So how, how do you navigate that? Okay. This is an important answer I'm going to give you. And I'm going to caveat it with saying I have never been married. But trust and believe. Anyway. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I cracked myself up. You have to remember you can't change anyone. That, that, that's the priority. 
And all you can do is continue to feed your passions. See, sometimes we have to shine our light in a way that others that are around us get the permission to do it. There may be a variety of reasons that he doesn't show up like that, but how does he show up? What is it that you love about him? What is it that he does that just gets you? How does he love on your children? How does he show his love? And then you start to compliment him on those things. You start to thank him for the simplest things. You start to give him your passion with no expectation. My father was a firefighter. I always call it stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop a little love and passion on him and keep it moving. And give it, I'm going to say give it 60 to 90 days. Don't give up. And then revisit. I hope that helps you. But the reality is you got to love him where he is and not expect him to be something that you are. He shows his love differently. I hope that helps. Thank you so much, Wanda. Um, you really, really appreciate taking the time to answer these questions. I know we are just a little bit over time, but as you can see on the screen, we do have Wanda's information up. So Again, thank you, Wanda. That was absolutely informative, inspire, inspiring, edifying. I told you all you were going to leave with something amazing today. And I am so honored to be here with you, Wanda, and all of you alumni, um, just being great participants, getting you know into this uh, session, and really generating some really good topics and conversations. So grateful for your participation. So now what you've probably been waiting for to enter for the opportunity to win a 30 minute coaching session with Wanda, you can tweet Wanda at WAA underscore LLC. It is also on your screen. Um, you can see her, her Twitter account there. Tweet her with your response to any one of the seven questions from today. Um, now, if you don't have Facebook, that, I'm sorry, Twitter, that's okay. You can also contact her on her Facebook page and leave a message there. Um, Wanda and her team will randomly select a winner and contact you directly. I want to thank each of you for attending and participating today. I hope to see you at more of our Terrapin um, Love Week events. Please make sure to visit the Alumni Association website where you can find out more information about upcoming events. We have a lot of great programming and content in store for you. So please go to the website for more information and really stay connected with your alumni association. Again, here is Wanda's information. And thank you all so very much for participating. Um, we really appreciate your time. Take care and go Terps.